This video was sponsored by PCBWay. Hey, remember this engine? I made it a few videos ago and I said I will launch it on this rocket called Impulse. Finally, after quite a bit of time and work, I think I'm ready to launch this engine. So the engine is really just a tube with two ends. The cap that does nothing aside from some boring stuff and the nozzle which accelerates the burning gases to over 1 km per second. As you can imagine, the pressure required for such a speed is enormous. I can't give you an exact number because the engine ended up making double the thrust it was designed for, but taking some stuff into consideration, I would say the pressure inside the engine is about 30 bar. I know, it's a lot. But the engine only sustains that for about 1 second, so it isn't really that bad. To make this engine work on my rocket though, we need to modify that boring part, the cap. Right now, all it does is hold the pressure so the engine doesn't... You know. But we actually want the cap to hold the pressure for some of the flight and then we want it to explode. Ok, not really, here's what I mean. So we want a small amount of gas to enter the fuselage of the rocket to push the parachute out so it can deploy and bring the rocket back safely. So here's what I came up with. I'm gonna make a taller cap so I can fill it with propellant. The propellant will act like a fuse and later in the flight it will ignite three firecrackers that will explode inside the fuselage, ejecting the parachute which will in turn bring the rocket back. Ok, while I wait for the part to get machined, let me show you the rocket. It is 40 cm long or um, just under 2 feet. It has a 70 cm parachute which should give it a terminal velocity of 4 meters per second or about 14 km per hour. This might not seem like a lot, but just imagine casually jogging into a wall. This is what the rocket would basically do on landing. I tried fitting a bigger parachute into the rocket, but the fuselage is too small to allow that. As you can see, the rocket was designed to be launched from a rail, which I got to say has very low friction, and the fin profile is an airfoil to increase the aero efficiency of the rocket. As you probably already saw, the whole rocket was 3D printed. This allowed for a more aerodynamic design. If you would like to make complex parts for your projects but don't have a 3D printer, Today's sponsor got you covered. PCB Way not only makes, well, PCBs, but also makes 3D printed, CNC machined, and injection molded parts, all at a very low cost. If you saw my previous videos, you already saw how awesome their CNC services are. They also have a lot of materials to choose from, even metal alloys such as aerospace grade aluminum and titanium. Their 3D printing services also offer metal 3D printing with aluminum, stainless steel and other alloys. So if you want to make a super efficient coffee maker thing like this guy did, PCBWay got you covered. For your next project you can get a free manufacturing quote today using the link in the description. Thanks a lot to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to our rocket. Good, the new cap just arrived so let's test it. These are the moments I was able to capture during the assembly of the motor. If all goes well, the engine should fire for about 1 second, burn the delay propellant for about 5 seconds, and then ignite the firecrackers. So, I just read the video plan and it says that I should discuss some of the flaws of this engine. Let's analyze the cross section from earlier. As you can see, the engine cap is held in place by these radial screws that don't apply pressure on the o-ring from the top. Generally, the elastomer or the component that seals the system should exert a higher pressure on the sealing face than the fluid's pressure. For example, if this engine has 30 bar of gas in it, the pressure on the o-ring and the sealing face should be higher than 30 bar. If the cap were to be mounted axially like this, the o-ring would compress as I, as I tighten down the screws. 
On this design, however, that doesn't happen, in fact it gets worse. You see, as I'm tightening down the cap screws, I'm forcing apart the tube and you guessed it, cap walls, meaning that the o-ring loses compression as I'm tightening down the cap. So basically, the gas inside the engine is held inside by God's will. At this point, I gave up optimizing and fixing the engine because I knew it was a dead end. Fixing the engine with such a bad initial design would mean making another one and I don't have the money nor time to do that. The video isn't over though. If the first <coughs> cap worked, why not use that? Well, because it's not compatible with the parachute, of course. But what if we didn't use the parachute? That's right, I'm making another rocket and I'm calling it Redstone. Even though this rocket doesn't have a parachute, it doesn't mean it lacks a recovery system. Check this out, so the nose cone will be actually made of two parts, a piston and a cylinder. When the rocket falls on the ground, the piston, which is the actual nose cone, will compress the air inside the cylinder, which is the rest of the rocket. This will give the rocket a decelerating distance, which should cushion the impact. The only thing left is to build it. Okay, so this is the final product, this is where the engine goes and after I load the propellant I can launch the rocket, so let's do that. Ok, I just came back from the launch and here's how it went. Let me start off with two words, made in America. That was awesome. The rocket landed in a cornfield behind the camera and somehow I was able to find it. As you can see, aside from the fins, the rocket is mostly intact, so I guess that's mission accomplished. I am so happy this thing flew so well and landed mostly in one piece. Finally, this engine I made half a year ago managed to fly successfully. If you didn't realize yet, this is the end of the video, but hang on for a few more minutes because I want to tell you about my future projects. Recently, I decided to make a gas engine and I even started designing some parts for it. As you can see, I tried casting the piston but haven't succeeded at that yet. I am also making a new compressed air engine. A new roll of filament just arrived, so I fi I'm finally able to finish it. As for the rocketry stuff, I will take a break. A part of me is saying that I should make more rockets and the other is saying that it's not worth the struggle. And right now the second part is winning. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project and if the air engine works, I might strap it on a plane.